Jenny Eldridge was the youngest child of a large family. She had four older brothers and two older sisters, and had always felt overlooked. So when she became a successful Airbnb blogger, she felt she'd finally found her purpose. She had just returned from a recent stay and was at home relaxing with her cat when there was a knock at her door. She opened it, but there was nobody there. She scanned the yard and street, but it was empty. She was about to close the door again when she glanced down and saw an envelope lying on the ground. She picked it up and examined it. The only inscription was her name in antiquated handwriting on the front. There was no return address. She opened the envelope. It contained a single handwritten sheet of paper that read, Miss Eldridge, we have a mansion and a remote, beautiful forest in the Adirondacks, which we have recently renovated and converted for Airbnb rentals. A review from you would be most welcome. We would provide a luxurious stay for two nights, all expenses paid. We guarantee it will be a sojourn unlike any you have experienced. There was no signature or name, only a phone number. There was something unsettling about it, though, and Jenny was inclined to toss it and forget it. But as she had it for the wastebasket, she felt something else jostle in the envelope. She stopped, puzzled. She looked inside and saw there was a photo. She removed it and looked at it. It was a mansion surrounded by tall trees. The image, it seemed to sharpen as she looked. And for a moment, the trees surrounding it appeared to sway in an unseen breeze. Jenny found herself being drawn in, as if any moment she might fall and tumble into the picture. A faint, chanting song rose from it. Come, it whispered. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. She had to almost forcibly pull her eyes away. Before Jenny even realized what she was doing, she found herself dialing the number. After a couple of rings, the call was answered not by a person, but by a recording. Miss Eldridge, we are so pleased you have called. Your acceptance of our offer is a delight to us. All details of your stay and directions to our property have already been sent to you. You should expect a parcel soon. We look forward to seeing you. Click. The call ended. Jenny looked at her phone, disturbed. This was a little too bizarre. She told herself firmly that this was an offer she must definitely decline. However, after receiving a thick packet with pictures of the beautiful interior and the many amenities included, she changed her mind. It will be an adventure, she said to her cat, Chance. I mean, I've never stayed in a mansion before. A week later, she stood in front of the imposing edifice. It was a massive place. At one end was a tall square tower with spires reaching to the sky. It seemed at home with the ancient forest surrounding it, almost as if it had sprung up from the rock it rested on. It fairly radiated with the elegance and luxury of a long ago past. Though, here and there, Jenny could see where the ravages of time had surreptitiously scarred it, like a woman past her prime who hid wrinkles behind a fan. Jenny entered the code she had been given into a key lockbox and retrieved a large brass key. She inserted it into the front door, which opened silently on oiled hinges. The interior was furnished with furniture from the early Victorian period, all of which was in excellent condition. She found her way to the set of rooms that were set aside for her. They were comfortable and luxurious. A basket of fruit, goodies, and wine greeted her from one of the bureaus, along with a note of welcome. Jenny thought it would be an enjoyable stay, despite the ambiguous strangeness that surrounded the unknown owners. She sat down to her laptop to write down her initial impressions, then went for a tour of the public portions of the mansion, which were all very impressive. 
The written instructions, though, had explicitly stated that the tower was out of bounds, so she didn't venture there, although she noticed a massive heavy door that she suspected led to it. She tentatively tried the knob, but it was firmly locked. Tired from her long drive, Jenny went to bed early that night. However, something woke her in the middle of the night. She lay there, not sure what had roused her. Then she heard it. It sounded like music, something ancient and far away. She sat up, wondering if there were any other guests staying that had come in after her. Of course, she thought, that had to be it. Jenny lay back down to return to sleep, but then her chanting began to weave itself into the music. It seemed almost to penetrate the walls of her bedroom, and it had a pulsing beat to it, like a heartbeat, she thought uncomfortably. The intoning voices grew, not in volume, but in a peculiar intensity, as if it were a living thing. She could almost imagine the music reaching long, diaphanous arms to weave about her. The thought unsettled her, and she sat up abruptly, reaching for the bedside lamp. Click. No light appeared to illuminate the room. Damn, she thought. The bulb must be dead. Throwing back the cover, she got out of bed and carefully made her way to the bureau, where she'd seen a candle earlier. She groped in the inky blackness and finally found it. Soon, Jenny was in the hallway. The lights did not work here either. But she felt a curious urge to discover the source of the sound. It seemed to be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. She slowly searched the immediate rooms but couldn't find where it was emanating from. Finally, she stood before the door to the tower. The door was open. Steep stone stairs led up to the blackness above and disappeared. The music and chanting were coming from the tower above. Her heart began to beat a rapid tattoo, and suddenly she felt afraid. No way, thought Jenny. I am not going up there. She turned to make a fast retreat, but she couldn't. There was nothing there she could see that should obstruct her, but she literally couldn't move forward. It was as if an unseen wall had suddenly been erected before her. She had no choice. She had to go into the tower. The stone walls were warm and seemed to throb under her fingertips as she slowly mounted the stairs. Jenny's imagination gave her the bizarre idea that the house was alive. At the top of the stairs was another door. It was thick and wooden and very time-worn. Before she could reach it, however, it opened slowly of its own accord. The music and chanting immediately ceased. A strange whirring sound took its place. Jenny, suddenly frightened now, slowly entered the room beyond. An old-fashioned film projector sat on a table just inside the room. It was running, but Jenny did not see a film being projected, only lights. The lights created a flickering corona around a man. She couldn't see any features, only his silhouette. Welcome, Jennifer, he said slowly, in a creaking voice that sounded rusty with disuse. Who who are you, she asked, her voice trembling. I am the Keeper. It is time. He stood up and approached her. Suddenly... Everything went black. When Jenny awoke, she discovered her entire body was thickly wound with cloth bandages, like a mummy. It covered her entire face. She couldn't see and could barely even breathe. You have been cleansed. Who are you? cried Jenny, her scream muffled by the bandages. Let me go! You are the seventh daughter of a seventh daughter, he croaked in his raspy voice. Let me go, you crazy freak, she yelled, squirming frantically. It is the full moon of the seventh year, he continued calmly. The house must be fed. 
She heard the door close with a hollow bang, the sound of it being locked. Something slivered over one of her feet and began to wrap itself around her leg. It was stabbed with pain. Whatever it was, it was eating through the bandages and into her flesh. His voice drifted through the old wood. The house must be fed. The tentacles of the house slowly wound all around Jenny's body. She screamed hysterically, but there was no answer, nor would there be. The house began to pulse loudly. It was feeding time. Seven years later, a lone hitchhiker having lost her way came upon the old mansion, and she sighed with relief. She was sure to find someone inside who could help her find her way. The house agreed. It had steered her toward it. For she was a seventh daughter of a seventh daughter. Happy Halloween from Vicky's Happy Place. Be afraid. Be very afraid.